from Kalmar in Sweden. It's the 1997 Swedish Table Tennis Open as we continue our coverage of the International Table Tennis Federation's Pro Tour. Gino Ed along with Anders Thunstrom, former coach and player with the national Swedish side. We're preparing for the men's final, but first, let's take a look at the Pro Tour standings heading into this championship. Remember, the top 16 men and women will advance to the final in Hong Kong. All right, let's go to today's men's final. Yan Sen of China facing Vladimir Samsonov of Belarus. And this tournament is especially important for this gentleman because Samsonov is trying to sneak into the world's top 16 players right now. He is right on the edge as he's number 17, Anders. So this is a very, very important tournament for him. It is, and for... Uh the viewers, it's very interesting as well to see Vladimir Samsonov. He's maybe the future big star from Europe anyway. He's only 20, 21 years old and, and uh, reaching the World Championship final against Walner in Manchester this year, but lost. So he's really on his way up. Now, you mentioned Walner. We're in Sweden. This is the tournament that he dearly would love to have done well. Janowit Walner ranked in the top five in the world right now, one of the game's premier players but he was knocked out in the first round of this tournament. That was just devastating for him. It was, surely was, and I would guess that the organizers also had, would love to see him playing uh, more matches, but that's how top sport is, and, and it's, uh, if you're not on top of your game, you, you, you will face a defeat. And what that does is shows you how strong this field here is, making the accomplishments of Samsonov and Yan Sen that much greater. Jan Sen, then uh, uh, Chinese player with the uh, pen holder style, uh, and a uh, little bit unusual. He's a left-hander, which is not that often you see uh, Chinese players producing. So, uh, pen holder style, left-hand player uses a lot of topspin in this game. And what that does is it makes it tough on the opponents because you face so few left-handed pen holder players that it's difficult to adjust your game to that. That's right, and you have to think more than once before you play the ball in, in the right direction. So, so it's going to be an interesting match. This. Jensen leading set number one of the best of five championship, 5-3. Five, if you should say something uh, extra about Vladimir Samsonov is that he's He's extremely skillful in a certain way that he keeps the ball on the table almost every time. You will not see many easy mistakes from Samsonov, and he's very steady to keeping the ball on, on the table. Also, you will never see him making a too long service or too long receives. He's, he's, what he does, he does with 100% uh, care and intention. And his concentration ability is second to none. And right now he trails by one, six, five, Yan Sen of China leading. We'll sh surely see Yan Sen trying to make a lot of uh, points on service, or like there, on first attack after service. Samsonov basically just running out of room to make the play on that. Oh, yeah, that was very, very loud. Right. Yan Sen leading, seven, five. This ought to be a very interesting match because Yen Sen is a very, very aggressive player. He is, and he will play on, on his speed, like you're saying. Aggressive, very quick, and, and that sometimes troubles Samsonov. If you can look at Samsonov's physics, he's very big and very tall, and that means that he has sometimes difficult to move very quickly. But he compensates with a tremendous ability of, of see the game, to read the game. And right now, Yen Sen's doing a little better job of reading the game much to the delight of his coach. He leads nine to five, and really controlling the pace right now. Samsonov has to slow it down a little bit. That's correct. Uh, the more Samsonov can slow down the pace, the better for him. And uh, also, the slower the game is, the more will Samsonov get room and space for his maneuvers. So that's exactly like you're saying, Gino. The, he has to slow down the pace. And that was an effective little technique there. <laughs> Taking right. a long, slow walk to retrieve the ball. Oh, nice 
lot of spin on that ball. You can see the service here, and then comes the top spin. Not that quick, but with a lot of spin on the ball. Which is an excellent tactics against pen holders. Because on their backhand side, it's sometimes difficult for them to keep down a lot of, of, of spin. And Samsonov doing a good job of disguising his spin to this point. What a shot. Excellent play by Janssen. Wide in, in Samsonov's four and corner. No chance for him to recover from that. Right at the bottom. No time to react. Beautiful. He's playing real aggressive now, and, and he's making the points. Eleven nine. Jensen, one of the world's top players, comes into the tournament ranked number nine in the pro circuit, uh, rather number five in the pro circuit. He'll move up at least to number four. With a victory, he can move up as high as number two. And Jansan have been frequently playing on the Pro Tour as well, so he is uh, going all the way up now. He's improving his game bit by bit and, and will be dangerous in the future for almost every player. Oh, good. Ability to even get to that by Jansan, but he just couldn't make the play and now leads 12-10. Just overpowered some center. And he's going for the quick ones and the quick shots. He was using something very unusual for a pen holder. If you look very, very carefully, using the, the, the backside of the rab, which is a new developed oh. technique by the Chinese. It was tough to detect, but that's the way he, he did it. Very, very unusual. He's just so quick, it's tough to follow. <laughs> it's the fastest ball game oh. in the world. That and high life. Samsonov would like to, to see it a little bit slower right now. Just a little bit more. The impressive thing with Samsonov is that it seems like he's never under pressure or never distressed due to the fact about the score. He's playing his oh. game and gradually when the match is going, in the progress, he's also improving his game. So uh, this is a very typical uh, scenario for a Samsono match, that he's, he starts a slow starter and then gradually improves his game. And I think a lot that has to do with that, the fact that he's only you know 20 years old. He's just a young man. He's just gaining some very valuable international experience. And this is his first pro circuit final of the year is really going to help him a lot down the road. Yeah, and it also has to, to do with his ability to read the game. He will perhaps be surprised in the opening set, or but once he has seen the, the shots from the opponent, he, he learns and memorizes how the, the, the shots is taken from the opponent. And by that, he's improving his game. As a former national team coach, uh, when you're dealing with somebody as young as Samsonov against somebody as experienced as Yan Sen, how much information are you going to give him between games? Will you focus on one or two aspects of the game as opposed to trying to overwhelm the young man with just too much information? Well, I think, yeah, it's a very good question. I think sometimes coaches maybe make too much emphasis to giving as much information as possible because if you're giving too much information, it's hard for the player to really detect which is very, very important and which is less important. So I, I would guess that and my philosophy is anyway to try to get down to the valid points trying to, to, to give him just focus on those. yeah give him advice on the vital points trying to, to to take it from there on not that much information normally 